Hey everyone, my name is Hughes, that's G-U-U-S, and today I hope to teach you something new about the Insta360 GO 2. Because of course there's so many reviews out there on the internet already, but they all kind of say the same things in different ways, right? So the Insta360 GO 2 is super lightweight and super small. It has great image stabilization and it exports video in 1440p, right? Well, this last one might not actually be completely true. And today I will explain to you why I think that that is the case. But before we dive in, I want to quickly point out that I do not personally own the Insta360 GO 2 yet. Insta360 are so nice to send me a unit for the purpose of review and use as a poor student with the passion for making running videos. So in case you want to see my review, once I do receive the unit, be sure to st actually stick around by subscribing to my YouTube channel. But for now, I am actually using a footage that was recorded by other people and I will also be uh, giving them credit uh, in the video and in the description down below. But let's just dive right in. So the Insta360 GO2, as you might already know, has a square image sensor. Out of that square image, there's actually only a circle of video that can be used for outputting video since all the rest is simply black because of the very fisheye lens that the GO2 has. So when recording in pro video mode, which a lot of people will tell you is the best way to record video, which I completely agree with, when recording in 30 frames per second, the output video quality will be a square video of 2880 pixels by 2880 pixels, of course. If you want to record in 50 frames per second, the output video quality is actually slightly lower because in that case it's only 2688 pixels. So 1440p is a resolution of 2560 pixels by 1440 pixels. That's why it's called 1440p. If we take the 30 FPS shot pro video and we want to get a crop out of that video of 2560 pixels by 1440 pixels, that is just, just possible without getting any of the black areas on the output video. If we look at the 50 frames per second video, it is impossible to get a crop of 1440p resolution out of the actual Insta360 GO Pro mode video. So what is happening there? Well, what Insta360 actually does is they stretch out the corners of the videos in order to make sure that you still get somewhat of a 1440p video. But these corners or edges will not be exactly 1440p anymore. And this is not a complaint towards Insta360 to be honest, like 1440p is the standard to export to and a big part of the frame is still 1440p, but it's just good to know that the peripheral might not be exactly 1440p. Now in this video I want to quickly look at the different field of view options that are also available on the Go 2. You can select these either in the Insta360 Studio on the computer or the Insta360 app that's available for Android and Apple devices, of course. So I've just loaded a pro video or a video that was recorded in pro mode, I should say, into the computer version of the Insta360 Studio right here. And right over here, we have the FOV options, the field of view options. And you can see that there's a couple of options out there. I will quickly go through them and then we'll actually have a look at where they sample their pixels from on the sensor so we can get a better idea of what a different field of view option actually captures what part of the sensor and what it visualizes, right? So we have the first one, which is ultra wide. It looks like this. Then we have action view, which is a little more stretched. It looks like linear, relatively self-explanatory. It just really defishes the view of the Insta360 GO 2. And then narrow is the one that I have the most questions about. And if you are somebody who works for Insta360, please feel free to message me on Instagram or even leave a comment down below with the answers to some of the questions that I do ask in this video, because 
there's some things that just don't make complete sense to me. So if you can clarify that to me, that would be absolutely amazing. All right, starting off with the ultra wide FOV. I've made this little graphic right here, which actually represents the uh, image that is captured. So looking at the example that we just had, it would look something like this. But overall, of course, these corners, they're just black. So let's quickly remove those out of frame. The circle is really what we want to pay attention to. And based on comparing the different field of view options, I think that the ultra wide field of view is sampled something like this relatively close to 16 by 9 there might be some cropping and stretching going on especially because of the uh, algorithm for stabilization that also needs some uh, space left around the frame in order to do its job properly and it definitely does its job properly because stabilization on this camera is absolutely amazing so ultra wide looks something like this then Let's move on to um, the next one, which is action view. What I've noticed with action view is you crop in on the sides a little bit and you gain a little bit in the height. This is great for when you're recording in cities with a bunch of tall buildings, for instance, and you really want to call the attention to these tall buildings. So let's quickly switch from ultra wide to action view, right? And pay attention to the tree tops right here, the steering wheel and the arms. So the arms we're going to actually lose a little bit, whereas in the trees and the steering wheel, we're going to gain a little bit. And that also gives this kind of speedy feeling because at this point you're pushing this together a little bit. And as a result, you get a bit of stretching in the other direction, of course. So that's what's happening right here. And you can see, we see more of the trees, more of the steering wheel and a bit less of the arms. So if we go back to our graphic right here, where does this uh, fall on our canvas right here? Well, more or less like that, right? We're gaining a bit in height and we're losing a bit in the width. And something to quickly point out here is that you can see the stretching that is going on. It doesn't catch your attention immediately simply because we're always focused on the middle of the video that we're looking at. But if you look up right here into the corners, you can see that there's some stretching happening and that the pixels might not be as sharp as they are right in the middle. So even though in the middle of this video it's 1440p or maybe even higher, the uh, outsides and especially in these corners, the resolution is slightly lower. This will still be exported to a 1440p file of course, but the resolutions might differ across the screen a little bit. Then the next one is for those people who don't like the fish IE view or the action focused view that the Insta360 go to has because that is the linear field of view. So when I switch to this, you will see that lines become much more straight. What I noticed actually is that this one seems to fall right in between ultra wide and action view, but it's actually the defishing that happens on the video that makes it linear. So if we are in linear and we pay attention to the steering wheel, for instance, right here, you can see now we can't see the entire steering wheel properly. But if we switch to action view, as we already said, we gain a little bit in the height and we can see the entire steering wheel. Let's switch back to linear mode though, because if we now switch to ultra wide, we're going to lose more of that steering wheel. Here we go. As you can see, we can't see as much of that steering wheel right now. And a similar thing holds for the arms in this case. When we'll switch to action view, we'll actually lose part of the arms if you pay attention to the middle of the frame right here. So now we're in linear, let's switch to action view and we've lost part of the arms right there. But at the same time, if we go back to linear and we switch to ultra wide, we will gain part of the arm. So there we go. And as you can see, now we have much more of the arms in the frame. So if we go back to our drawing right here and we have a look at linear, it seems to fall right in between those two, even though there is much more defishing going on. And that is something we can see in Insta360 Studio right here. If we go to linear, you can see that pixels are much more stretched 
on these edges right here in particular in the corners you can see that the resolution is lower than 1440p but simply because this is an action camera and you're not that focused on that peripheral the surroundings of the video you're much more focused on the center of the video this doesn't actually matter that much where it does matter though is the narrow field of view and this is one that really confuses me I don't know what Insta360 was thinking here. Well, I guess they were thinking we want to focus more on a certain object and we want to look really straightforward, you know, not look at any of the peripheral. But the narrow field of view is literally a crop into the linear field of view. It's about a 65% uh, zoom in, so to say. So as you can see right here, if I switch to narrow, we're literally just cropping in a little bit. And the problem I have with this, okay, is that this video you're seeing right now is not 1440p anymore. It is something like 936p, that is what I calculated simply by assuming that linear is still 1440p, so then 60% uh, of that would be 936p, but this is an approximation. My point is, that this narrow field of view is not 1440p anymore. So Insta360, why is this video still being exported to 1440p? If you export it in the studio, on the computer or in the app, the output will still be a 1440p video. And there's no fancy upscaling or anything happening here. I've validated that, I've had a look at it and it's just simply not the case so why is a 936p video or even a 1080p video exported to 1440p this could really simply be solved by not exporting to 1440p and then simply saving some uh, memory on your phone or on your computer because the file sizes will be smaller if you only export to for instance 1080p but in this case, that doesn't seem to happen. So that's my big question to Insta360. Why is it that this doesn't happen? Am I missing something? In case you don't work for Insta360, but you still have a clue about this or some suggestions, be sure to let me know in the comments because I am kind of lost about this. All right, one final kind of positive thing, I guess, to say about this narrow field of view though, is the fact that it only takes such a small part of the sensor and as a result I am sure that this will have the best stabilization. This is similar to what we had on the original Go where we had the wide field of view and then the linear field of view which was comparable to this narrow field of view what we have right here and switching between them would actually make the video a whole lot more stable simply because the algorithm, the stabilization algorithm had a lot more canvas to work with. So narrow, the quality might not be amazing, but I think the stabilization improves a lot. Of course, I can't validate this right now, but based on the videos that I have seen, this does seem to be the case. And it's a little bit of an advantage together with a disadvantage, right? But that's really everything I wanted to share with you today. So in case you thought this video was helpful or you enjoyed it, be sure to actually leave a like down below. You want to discuss whatever I've discussed uh, in this video, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. I'm happy to keep this conversation going. Hopefully we can figure out some other things together in the comments down below. In case you're into running or technology or videos like this, to be honest, be sure to stick around by subscribing to my YouTube channel. But thank you so much for watching. You just keep on rolling and then you'll see me again in the next one. Bye-bye.